Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to take a look at the conventional way of solving. No, let's try again. All right. Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to take the notation that now we've become familiar with for the, for the notation of a function in algebra, and we're going to use it to find the general equation of a slope. What we're going to do here is take a look at our function f of x equals x squared, which is simply a parabola that has the vertex right here at the origin. You can see here that the slope changes constantly, gets steeper and steeper and steeper. We pick an arbitrary point where the x-coordinate is simply equal to x, and we pick a second point on the curve where that's x plus h, a distance h away to the right from our original point. And then we can find the corresponding y values of the coordinates we have y1, which is the function evaluated at x, and we have y2, the function evaluated at x plus h. Kind of what we did the last time, but this time we're doing it on a curve rather than on a straight line. I've also drawn in blue color a tangent line, a line that is tangent to the slope at the point x. And so here it is, the tangent line to the function at the point x comma, and of course it should be y sub 1. Okay. Now, let's calculate the slope of the, the line that connects the two points. That's this slope right here, which of course is not the same as the slope of the tangent line there. We don't care at this point. We simply want to find the slope of that line. And of course, we know that the slope is equal to the rise divided by the run. Now, what is the rise between those two points? It's the difference between the two y values. So the rise is y2 minus y1, and the run is the distance between those two values, which is x plus h minus x. So I take the farthest point, subtract the closest point, at least the x values of that. So that means that the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by, well, x minus x, that's 0. All we have left in the denominator is h. And of course, you can see that h is simply this distance right here. Now, let's evaluate for y2 and y1. Remember that y2 is the function evaluated at x plus h, and y1 was the function evaluated at x. So that means that this is equal to the function evaluated at x plus h minus the function evaluated at x all divided by h. Now let's go ahead and evaluate those functions. So, the function is f of x equals x squared, which means we're going to replace every x by the quantity x plus h. So this is equal to the quantity x plus h squared. So instead of x squared, we have x plus h squared. Minus the function evaluated x, well, that's simply x squared divided by h. Now we have to multiply this out and see what we get. So this is equal to the first term squared plus twice the product, 2xh, plus the last term squared, h squared, and that's minus x squared, we can't forget minus x squared, all divided by h. Now we realize that this x squared and this x squared cancels, and so now all we have left is 2xh plus h squared divided by h. Now we can divide h into the numerator because every term in the numerator contains an h, so this is equal to 2x plus h. So essentially what we found here was that the slope is equal to, oh, I forget an e, didn't I? The slope is equal to 2x plus h. Now at this point we may not realize what that means, which is okay, but that is the slope of the line going from any arbitrary point here to any other line a distance h away from the first point, or another point a distance away from the first point. So it equals the slope over here. Now you can see that this slope is by no means the same as the tangent line slope over here. So what can I do to make this slope the same as this slope? Well, maybe what I could have done is I could have picked a point that was a little bit closer. So maybe I should have picked this point instead of that point. And so you can see then that the slope of this line connected those two points is closer to the slope of the blue line. So in other words, it didn't matter what the value for h was. 
I can make a smaller. Now you can see that the slope between those two points is much closer to the slope of the blue line than the slope of the black line. And so if h becomes smaller, the slope gets to be closer. Well, wait a minute. What I could have done is I could have picked a point even closer than that. I could have picked this point right here. And now you see that the slope of the green line is almost the same as the slope of the blue line. Well, really what I could have done is I could have picked a point that is really close. Remember, it doesn't matter how big the h is. I could have picked h to be really, 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 really small. And if I pick h small enough, eventually the slope between the two points will be exactly the same as the slope of the blue line. If I let h go all the way down to, well, almost zero. Infinitesimally small. So then I look back to my slope and I go, well, what if h becomes zero? So now I can write that the slope as <coughs> h goes to zero, then the slope of the black line will very closely equal the slope of the blue line, and then that will be equal to 2x, right? The limit in the limit, as we find the slope, as h goes to zero, the slope will become 2x because h essentially goes to zero. So what we've done here is we've enabled us to find the slope anywhere along that curve for any point x. It doesn't matter what the value of x is, the slope will be 2 times that value for x because when we make h small enough, the slope will be equal to the tangent line at that location. So at this point you say, well, that doesn't mean much for me, but that's okay. Eventually, when you get onto calculus, this is the very principle we use to find the derivative, which means to find the slope of that particular curve. So that's why it's so important to get used to this notation right here, because once you get used to the notation, then it becomes really easy to do what we need to do next, is to find the slope of any function by simply saying, I take the difference between the two y values and divide it by the difference between the two x values, and the two va y values are simply evaluated between two points on the x direction. And that is how it's done. That's how we calculate the slope in this particular fashion. That certainly confused me when I was taking that class. Yes, and I remember it confused me too. However, if you see it often enough, you become familiar with it and it gets to be like, oh, yes, that makes sense. So hopefully, the viewers can look at this and go, after a while, go, ah, yes, that makes sense. I think he's trying to get you to watch it. <laughs> a few more times. <laughs> no, but that's how you learn it. That's the whole purpose of this. That's how we learn this.